So, Dr. Bear, a lot of people out there, they might be wondering about this Barbie movie. They're seeing the advertisements, the trailer, and they're thinking, huh, should I take my daughter to see this movie? You have an article over at Movie Guide, um, the organization. You have an article there that it's titled, Warning, Don't Take Your Daughter to Barbie. And so what was it that led to that determination? Well, frankly, we saw the movie on Sunday night. And uh, the movie is worse than you could possibly expect. It's hardcore propaganda. We're not allowed to release a review until two days before. So they have it embargoed. So we see a lot of movies early. We write the reviews and then we wait. So that's part of life in the big city of Hollywood. But uh, Barbie just is terrible. The first few minutes, it's got a bunch of little girls playing with little baby dolls. Now, I've got 17 grandchildren, and the most of them are little girls, and they love playing with baby dolls. And the girls take the baby dolls and bash them and slap them, and we don't have to, and say we don't have to be mothers anymore. In Barbie land, men are the problem with all of society. It's hardcore feminist. So they've banished men so they have a better life. In fact, um, you know, Ken is the villain in the movie. And Barbie has to leave because she's not adapting to, you know, this hate of the patriarchal society, although she hates Ken. Um, so men are the villain and trans, you know, there, there are a couple of trans people playing characters, Barbies. So, you know, men play better Barbies than women play Barbies, by the way. So you should tell your little girls that, that if you want to be Barbie, you want to be a swimmer, you want to be a, anything else in society men can be women better. That's what the movie's saying. So the doctor in the movie, Dr. Barbie, is a trans, and he was quoted in his interview of saying that this movie is candy with a little bit of poison, and other member, the other trans person said, this is going to finish the gender conversation forever because all the little kids who see it are going to realize that you don't have to be women to be women if there are women, which is really weird to me because I'm, you know, 77 years old. So, you know, I still believe that our DNA and everything <laughs> else says that you know, I'm a man. You, fo you follow the science, Dr. Bear. I figured out how to be a man. Uh, and my wife was, you know, practically perfect. And she died last year and she was wonderful. And she'd always say, why are you taking such good care of me? And I'd say it's my privilege to have a wife like you. So I believe that God designed us for men and women, and we love each other, and it's our privilege if we can be in a marriage. And this attack on men, and this this is really an attack on women, Billy, because you're saying to those little girls who go to see this movie that some little boy can be a better girl than that little girl. So it's an attack on men. It's an attack on women. And to me... I don't know who wants to go see that, but they've already sold thousands of tickets. AMC said they've sold more tickets for this movie. The people pre-bought the tickets saying, we want to see Barbie because Barbie is one of the most popular toys of all time. Well, the previews wouldn't indicate these issues necessarily, right? The previews don't show disdain between Barbie and Ken. They don't show any of this. How, how overt are... The LGBTQ themes, right? You know, are they are they very in your overt. face over? They're, they're very extremely, overt. they're extremely overt. It's not, it's not subterfuge. It's not subtle. It's you know, when the kids, when the little girls are bashing the babies, saying we don't have to be mothers anymore, they're bashing the baby dolls and saying we don't have to be mothers. Uh, all the all the characters uh, are very clear that this is in. I mean, it's so interesting to me because you have Mattel, you know, this is a, a legendary brand, right? And so you have them out there um, giving this permission to make this this movie. Were you surprised at all in light of the legacy of Barbie that this is what you walked away seeing? Well, in, for the last couple of years, I'm not surprised. But, you know, a friend of mine who made $14 billion through Barbie and all the tchotchkes and everything else was a Christian. And he always wove Christian themes into Barbie. Um, so you had Christian content. And he was let go a couple. He was in charge of all the motion pictures and television and everything else. And he resigned, retired from Barbie. That's a simple way of saying it. 
Uh, he's now doing series with Netflix, which is great. So he retired from Barbie. He's now doing Netflix series. But Barbie then hired a, a woman to do it. And they said, this is the first time we've had somebody as the head of motion picture. It's not true. I mean, they did the motion pictures. They did lots of them. So suddenly you had Barbie moving in a different direction. And if if you want to pay attention to the news, which you do all the time, Billy, because you, you do the news, um, you have all these companies that have gone really bad. I mean, it's not just Bud Light, but now Miller Light is also in. Anheuser-Busch and lipstick companies and, you know, Target and all this. I mean, this is not, you know, and a lot of these companies were started, Home Depot, et cetera, by Christians, uh, Sam Walton, Walmart. They were started by Christians. And like my friend who was Christian, who was the head of Barbie for many, many years. So this is a very sad situation. I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that Greta, um, the director is going to be directing Narnia now uh, because I, I was head of the company that did Narnia on CBS television. And we, I fought, we fought with the children's television workshop that we'd hired to animate it and everything because they did Sesame Street and they were friends and they kept wanting to change the plot. They didn't want to have Aslan resurrected because they didn't understand resurrected. They wanted to have Lucy to have some magic potion and be sort of a witch and change the whole story. So I can imagine the Narnia going off into the wrong side. Yeah. Well, and I don't know where, where the rights stand on that. I think the question too is, you know, what, what will CS Lewis's estate, if they have any involvement in it say, I don't, well, I don't know that they do. You know, you know, Doug Gresham is the godfather of my daughter-in-law in Australia and the godfather of my granddaughter. So actually we know Doug Gresham. And I just sent him a note and said, you, you really want Greta to do an Arnia movie? You can't do this. He pulled the rights from somebody else that I knew very well when they started going south and having atheists direct the movie. So, um, but he's getting old. You're not yeah. getting well, old. I look young. I'm getting old. <laughs> you still look very young. Well, I have to I have to ask you this because just as we sort of round this conversation out, your advice is do not take your kids to see this film, obviously. And you, you guys have made that clear. And we have to wait for the full review until a couple of days before. But you've given us enough to understand from your perspective what, what is going on here. What would your advice to Mattel be at this point in light of this, in light of, I mean, how many, you mentioned a number of the businesses, how many reactions have we seen to this? And again, I would just add a lot of people buying those tickets might not realize the contents of what they're about to watch. What would your advice to Mattel be? My advice to Mattel is to, <laughs> like Disney hiring Robert Iger, and he's now upset with the fact that they started getting into a political position. And he's trying to remove them from all that. It's going to be hard to extricate not just Mattel, but Warner Brothers from this because Warner Brothers had not gone down this road. And Paramount, which you mission, you know, Mission Impossible, has not gone down this road. So once they all go down this road, it's going to be very hard to find entertainment unless we all go to Sound of Freedom. Yeah, well, and the media the media has made its position pretty clear, some outlets on the Sound of Freedom, too. So it's, it's an interesting time. Um, just final question for you, because you've been watching all of these patterns, specifically in entertainment. Disney has made some decisions that seem to be harming them. Um, you mentioned all the tickets that have been sold to this. What's your prediction? And I know predictions are a little tricky. Do you think this Barbie movie breaks records as well, or do you think some of this, the contents catch up to it? Oh, you know, I always tell people, especially in the secular press, which you're not, but everybody I tell, I don't have a crystal ball. And I'm always shocked. I mean, um, let's just take Sound of Freedom as an example. Uh, you have to do two and a half times negative cost to break even. The theater takes 50%. So if they make 60 million, which is, I think, where they are now, the theater takes 50%. So they only get 30 million. And then the distributor takes 50% of 50 of the remainder. So they only get about 12 million. And 12 million won't cover the budget and the P&A. So, you, you know, you, you're you not at that point yet of galvanizing. Now, Christians get excited because they say $60 million, that's a lot of money. Actually, if you divide it by $10 a ticket, that's 6 million people in a country of 360 million people. And I do those numbers all the time. We do that report. So you've got to really get above $100 million for all these movies, whether it's Jesus Revolution or we're still playing 
in a different you know ballpark here and barbie will do um it'll do well because it's so well publicized whether it'll be a breakout hit whether it'll you know taper off quickly i imagine the first weekend because we already know that the, a lot of people have bought tickets that you're going to do well well i appreciate you taking the time as always